Uh, oh, back again it? for some more mediocre Survivor. Oop, I already said that. Well, <laughs> shit. That's how, well, that's how we're starting the episode. All right. I didn't lie. I didn't mm. lie. But... Hello, 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 castaways, and welcome to The Cup, the currently unnamed podcast where we put the real and the tea in reality, and you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I'm Logan Murphy, say something gay. Gay. Today, I am drinking some kiwi lemonade. Ooh. It's gorgeous. It's that sounds so delicious. Good. It's so good. And of course, I'm drinking it in my cup mug. A lot. Period. Hello. Her. So... And I'll tell you where to get that. You can get that at, at lanajiscreations.etsy.com. You can get your cup mug and all of your official cup merch. And we do ship internationally and domestically. So there are no excuses. And I'm looking at you, UK. I'm looking at you. But if you don't know already, I am your girl, Lana, your resident evil diva and i'm here to give the tea spill the tea and drink the tea because you know i loves me some tea her and if you have some tea you know what to do hit me up i am currently just drinking on the sprite because i have a bunch of them and that's just what i'm going to be drinking over a while so there we go and yeah her mm, party mm, party We're here to talk about some mediocre survivor. Um, or at least I least, unless I think you already said that, but I'm gonna okay. say it again. Say it again, and boo. Say it again. And what? you know what else? Not impressed with this episode. Got Not it. impressed. Not impressed. But before we jump into the episode, you know what we want you to do? We want you to hit the subscribe button. Hit it. Let us know that you are subscribing and you support us because guess what? We support you and we appreciate you. And we have some really great content coming out here. And if you just want to talk about all things drag, go to our other channel at the Cup Pod and subscribe over there. But do that after we finish this video. Then you can go over yep. there and subscribe there. Because you want to hear what we got to talk about. Because we got thoughts. I mean, these two episodes were so surface level. They were so filler. I didn't even bother to take notes. Like, the first two episodes, I was like, okay, I'm going to write down some things, like, early dynamics, cool, 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 whatever. This up, Both of these episodes were so straightforward in an absolutely abysmal way for me. Mm. And I'm just, I'm really disappointed in these two episodes specifically, and I'm disappointed in the trajectory that this season is taking. Yep. Same. Same, same, same. But let's just jump right into it. Because the sooner we start, the sooner it ends. Yeah. So uh, we, we, we're in episode three. We're getting tribal dynamics, blah, 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 this, that, and the third. And almost immediately we see Lee talking about, well, all the men have a, have an alliance already. It's already, it's understood. And I'm like, God help me. No. Oh. <sighs> Kill. Like. Take this I off just, my screen right now. Throw it away. Every and I, I really thought this was setting up for a big old blind side at the end of the episode, and it really was not. And it should have been. It could have been. It would have been. It could if, people have been. Just, if people just learn how to speak up for themselves, it could have been a really great episode. But it did not turn out that way. And it was just weird to me. Leah was like, it was just an understanding. And here's where I thought we might have a sliver. A sliver of hope. Because Doug was listening to Lee talking about how is this men's alliance. It's already happening. Things are happening. It's good. And Doug was like, that's not how I want to play this game. I don't believe all male alliance is the smartest alliance to go through because it's just not that's we, 
we don't have all the skill sets that we need for this well-rounded game. And we need people who will have other skill sets. And I don't think brute strength is the only thing we need to base this on. Because Lee was like, I mean, facts are facts. We just need to start picking off the people who are the weakest in the challenges. And whoever the weakest in the challenges, they need to go. And obviously the girls are the weakest in the challenge. And I'm like, obviously? Maybe obviously in these last two challenges because they were all physical challenges, but yeah, <laughs> interesting. But I was like, okay, maybe we have a sliver of hope with Doug. Maybe Doug is going to be like, ah, I'm going to bug against this, this male-dominated system and see what we can do. Boy, was I sadly, sadly mistaken. I, I'm not ruling it out for the near future, no. but he didn't in these episodes, and I'm disappointed about it. But, yeah, I'm just, I'm frustrated because I'm just, I'm frustrated. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk more about it. But pretty immediately on, we get kind of the first big twist that we've seen this season, which uh, has both tribes send somebody to the outpost. Mm-hmm where we get the introduction and spend about 10 minutes explaining what a hidden immunity idol is. Yeah. And I'm like, I get it. The UK hasn't had Survivor in 20 years. I understand. But just still. They, I was about to say, just because they ain't had Survivor don't mean they ain't watched Survivor. A different Survivor. I mean, from what it sounds like, most of the people on this cast were recruits. Maybe, maybe. And there's only two or three super fans. One of which gets sent to the outpost. So mm -hmm. Lenana decides to send Ren, and Calaton decides to send Lawrence. And here we get Ren's little intro package where we find out they're non binary. And I was like, well, there's my favorite. Mm -hmm. There's who I'm rooting for amongst several many other people on this season, um, mostly everybody black and Ren. And Jess, I have to be honest, I'm really liking Jess as well. I like so, Lawrence as well. Not really I like not. really like Lawrence because I, I like Doug. I I spy something, but we'll talk about it later. Oh, okay. Um, but yes, so I was immediately like, oh, and Ren. I think we've had confirmed. I don't know if it was on the episode or on socials, but Ren is a super fan. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay, they're one of us. Great, cool, love it, wonderful, fantastic. So Ren and Lawrence separately go to the outpost where they are faced with a moral dilemma, and they have three options. It's normally only two, but today we're getting three options. So the first option is a big fish with a bunch of veggies. You take that back to your camp, and your tribe mates, uh, you all can enjoy it together. The middle option is a smaller fish with a couple of things, but you get a clue to the location of a hidden immunity idol at your camp, but you have to share it with another one of your tribe members. Mm -hmm. And then the third option is a potato. Just a potato. Just a potato with a little and flick of you, cheese. And you get the idol? Yeah. Yeah, you get the idol. Something like that. So, I definitely understand both perspectives of mm -hmm. Ren and Lawrence, knowing their familiarity with uh, with Survivor. Mm -hmm. So, Lawrence takes the big fish mm -hmm. because he's trying to strengthen his tribe. And Ren takes the smaller fish and the clue to the idol. And they decide they're going to go back to camp. And they're going to uh, share their clue with Doug. Mm -hmm. Now, there is one thing I noticed, and I do really appreciate this. And I didn't know, after we found out that Ren is non-binary, I didn't know how it was going to be portrayed. But I really did appreciate all of the people that were like, it's really the boy side against the the girls and Ren. And, Ren. and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I really appreciate that. And there were two people specifically that didn't do that. And I noted exactly who they are. Mm -hmm. And to nobody's surprise whatsoever, it's Lee and Pegleg. Mm -hmm. I'm so shocked. 
Yeah. But I did love it because I think um, Ashley Ashley acknowledged or properly acknowledged Ren as not being a woman. Mm -hmm. Doug did it. I think a couple other people. I think Hannah did it. At Hannah did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. So those are the people I will be uh, encouraging forward in the competition. But um, they go back to camp. They present their stuff. Lawrence is very forthright, being like, I got the big fish. There was a clue to the idol. Right. Or there was a big fish. Later, mm -hmm. it might not even have been in this episode. It might have been in episode four. Later no. tells Tanuki. Okay. And this is where I'm jumping in. Because this is where I spy. This is where I spy. Mm -hmm. Because Lawrence and Tanuki... First of all, I love their 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 friend their relationship, their friendship. Would have never expected these two people to work together, honestly, but I'm living for it. I love it. But they seem way closer than just I trust you in this game. Because every time we see the group like walking somewhere together. They're together, and he's wrapped. He's wrapped his arms around her. She, she's like holding on to his waist. They're walking, and I was like, "That happened only two, three times in this episode." I was like, "What's happening with Lawrence and Tanuki?" Not that I want a showman, because y'all know I hate showman, especially survival showman. I'm not a fan of survival showman, but I never would have expected this duo to come together, and I kind of live for it. I hope it's obviously he trusts her enough. Because he didn't have to tell anybody anything because he was not obligated to say anything about the idols or the clue or anything. Yeah. But he obviously trusts her enough to go and tell her, hey, it is an idol on this beach somewhere. I was like, mm. Okay. I love it. I'm like, I what are it. we not? I'm like, what have we not seen? Because I mean, Calaton really has not been featured much. Mm -mm. Period. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And we'll talk about episode four a little bit, but again, it was a very straightforward vote. Um, but yeah, so Lawrence is very forthright. Tells Tanuki about um, the the fact that there is an idol on the beach. We don't see anything come of that in these two episodes. I hope we see something. I hope we see Tanuki getting the idol. Honestly. I love it. I would love that. I would love it. Um, and then on the other side, we see Ren come back. They're telling the tribe all about um, the dilemma. It was, a, they said that it was a bag of rice mm -hmm. or the fish. And I actually think that's probably one of the better lies. Mm -hmm. Because you could, you could say that instead of the dilemma being these three options with the idol, you could say that the dilemma was... Um, sustenance for a like lower sustenance for a longer time or higher sustenance for a shorter time, and I think that's actually a really nice way to play off of mm -hmm. uh, the more the concept of this moral dilemma. And if mm -hmm. bullshit hadn't fucking happened at the challenge, mm -hmm. I think they would have been able to get away with it. Mm -hmm. I could have got away with my plan if it wasn't for you pesky kids. Literally, that's what it felt like. <laughs> I was like. <gasps> Mm. That's literally what it felt like. I was like, oh, you've got to be fucking joking. But <laughs> I thought it was fine. This mm -hmm. twist is fine. I'm mm -hmm. like, cool. 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 Great. Um, We go to the challenge, and it is a classic survivor challenge hot pursuit. Mm -hmm. um, I was happy to see this. Mm -hmm. I was happy to see this coupled with what the, the immunity challenge was in episode four. Yes. I was like, okay, thank God not everything is physical-based. Right. Because especially that's what the um, the ladies in Ren were talking about at the water well in episode four. Was the talking Lin about yeah, the ladies in Ren and Lenina. I thought you, I was just saying with Tribe. Oh, <laughs> you, said that, you just said the ladies in Ren. I was like, in the, of Lenina. Lenina. <laughs> they're all on Lenina. They are. But, they um, are. <laughs> Ashley, Hannah, and Ren. There we right. go. <laughs> Ashley, Hannah, and Ren were all talking about, you know, let's just hope that not all the challenges are physical and we need to balance out the tribal dynamic of, like, not everything is going to be brute physical strength. Mm -hmm. There are going to be some things, like we saw in episode four, we'll talk about it, where it's not physical, 
whatsoever. And right. the people we saw struggle are the big physical people, but we'll talk exactly. about that. So hot pursuit, they take two very different strategies. Yep. And I mean, we've seen time and time again that the strategy that Calaton implemented is oh the strategy gosh. that 90 for 95 percent of the time works. And 95 percent works. Like I hardly ever see that strategy not work. Because they ended up because Lenena ended up dropping down to Doug, Christopher, and Lee oh, yeah. by the very yeah. end of the challenge. Yeah. Um and they were each carrying, I think it was 18 kilos. Yeah. Um, whereas Calaton was slower, steadier. I think everyone was still in it at that point, except for Leilani. Leilani. Mm -hmm. um, which we'll talk about Leilani. Because I think Leilani is a very interesting character in this season. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. well, very we'll interesting we'll character. In this yeah. <laughs> but... Um, the challenge doesn't take all that long. Calaton does win. Period. Um, not surprised there. Not so surprised. Lenena's going back to tribal, and to nobody's surprise whatsoever, the vote is going to be on a woman. Mm -hmm. And it basically comes down to while the men are all strong, we like Hannah, and Doug has a good relationship with Ren, so it's Rach or Ashley. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> And then Lee wanted to justify this whole concept by saying, well, Rach is a PT, so she shouldn't have dropped out so soon. I was like, but did, ain't that what the strategy plan that you put in order? Everybody drop out soon and we'll just sprint it? Like, even though, and Rach was like, I told y'all I'm not a runner. Like, that's not what I do. And they wanted to sprint out the gate instead of making it a slow and steady pace, making it comfortable for everybody to run until the other team got tired. No, they wanted to shoot out the gate and people gassed out quickly. Not everyone on this tribe is a boxing champion, Lee. Like, we can't do that. That's not what we do. My but, frustration here oh. is just if, like, the thing is, if... At the very least, if Rach, Ashley, Ren, and Christopher, at the very least, could have come together and actually had a conversation, they could have taken out Lee. Could have easily. I think based on where I think based on where the votes ended up falling, um, I think it would have been four to two to two. Because mm -hmm. if Ashley votes Rach. Or Ashley votes Lee, Christopher votes Lee, Ren Rach votes Lee. Lee, and Rach votes Lee. Then it literally would have been two to two or four to two to two. Yep. But this is not a strategic cast because none of these people know Big Brother or no Survivor. They definitely don't know Big Brother. No. It's ridiculous. I'm like, <sighs> are you kidding me? Can you? I, I don't understand. It, and this is my thing. Ashley and Rach were both like, I don't want to vote for you. And I don't want to vote for her. Well, then don't. Put your vote on someone else. Get other people to vote for someone else. They only saying your name because those are the only names that came out. Throw somebody else's name in the mix. You don't have to vote for her. Could be like, okay, girl. Let's let's turn the ties and let's put it on shift it on to somebody else and we could just talk about it. And heck, if you if Lee here, I'm throwing his name out, it don't matter. You was trying to vote me out anyway. So I don't care if you heard that I heard that I was saying your name. I will come up and tell you I'm saying your name. But what I am not gonna do is just sit there and let you just poison a whole tribe against me and say I'm the weakest link because I'm a, a personal trainer who didn't run. No, that's not what we're doing. I would sit there if I was Rachel and ask, I'd be like, okay, so this is what we go do. We go go to Ren, we go go to Hannah, and we go see if we can switch them around. If they don't work, we go on to Doug, we go on to uh, uh, Christopher. Christopher, and we go see if we can. We go go to as many people as we can to see if we can flip the vote, and we can come back and be like, I heard y'all throwing my name. Yes, I'm saying your name because you're saying mine. I don't care you heard me saying your name i'll say it to your face i won't you go on leave 
They even really, they honestly only needed one vote and then they could have tied. And then we would go into uh, the revote, and I'm like, y'all, let's talk about this. <laughs> this man came up with this bad strategy and we lost because of his strategy. Send him home. And then we still have a strong tribe. We just don't have him and his sad motivational speeches every day. Come on, y'all can do this. We can do this. We can do this. Like, shut up. Shut up. I, I don't like this man. I don't like this man. I'm sure it's obvious. Yeah. I don't like this man. I nope. don't think he's he, he's just, oh, he's not a good player. He's just not good. But the fact that that he's this man and they all listen to him is just driving me insane because I'm like, all you have to do is open your mouth and say some words to get people to listen to you and flip the vote on him. Those are good strategic survivor players. That's what, that's what the, oh, I can't. Okay. Yeah. And then to nobody's surprise, five to three, Rach gets voted out. And I mean, like, okay. I had no I had no sentimental attachment to Rach. I'm sorry she's sure. gone, but whatever. Like she could have saved herself if she would have said something. She could have yeah. saved herself. And they just sat she just sat there and, and, and died, rolled over and died. And her and her friend voted for each other when they didn't have to do that. No strategic backbone. No strategic strategy. No strategic backbone in this game at all. At all. This is, this is very sad. Mediocre. Okay. <laughs> so lame. Yeah. Just. <sighs> oh, one more thing before we move on because I really want to talk about before they read the votes when Joel was like, if anybody has a hidden immunity idol, you, and you want to play it, now's the chance to do it. And everybody's like, <gasps> and Ren was like, I'm like, are you stupid? Would you put a surprise look on your face so people don't like, act like you don't know that it's a human beauty? Nobody knew what you were doing. You got to act surprised. Like, what? I said, yeah. I've been like, yeah, the beauty idols. <laughs> she just said, they're like, mm-hmm. I knew about it. Mm hmm. I was like, these people have no idea how to play Spot. And she's a super fan. I just. And I will be having the same rant in the next episode. Just saying. (laughs) I just, I can't, I can't. She's a super fan. She should know better. Her face, I would have looked right over her and I'm like, oh. But it seems like no one noticed, which I think is the fun thing. That's the craziest thing. Nobody looked. I'm looking around like, oh, girl, oh, okay. She knew. And I walked right over to the place, so you knew about the hidden immunity. I don't know. <laughs> like, you got it. Well, I think as well, she could have played it off as, oh, yeah, I'm a, I've am watched the show before. I figured it was probably happening. Like, I think there's ways that they could have gotten out of it, but... Mm-hmm. They, 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 the look on their face was so obvious. I was like, mm. and no one seemed. Everyone was kind seen. of. Everyone was more preoccupied <laughs> with Joel and all that than you know figuring out what was happening. But I will, I will say, on the topic of Joel, before we dive into episode four, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I've come around. I think mm-hmm. I like him. I think okay. I like him. I was, I was unsure in the first two episodes. I was like, I'm not too sure about this guy. I don't know, but he is really giving me JLP energy, mm-hmm. and I'm happy about that. I really like Joel. I am a fan of his and how he is running this the show. I will say this about the editor this week, and I know you said it last week, and uh, but I, I really saw it this week. Whoever does Love Island UK actually does Survivor UK because this was the most Love Island episode of Survivor I've ever seen in my life. The way it was edited, it was everything about it. From that's and that feels more just like British competition reality TV. Period. Because I get that same thing from Big Brother UK. I get that same thing from I'm a Celeb. Like it's very that kind of style. And I mean, because Love Island started in UK and we're getting it in America and it's the same type of editing for Love Island US. It's the same type of editing for Love Island Australia. It was very Love Island-esque. 
for a survivor. Like everything from the slow walks to the 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 kid. Well, and then the, the random pop music. pop music as they're going to the reward. I was like, what? but I think what? I think that is just more of a testament to just British reality TV. Period. Because those same sort of those those same sort of things pop up in a lot of the other British like competition shows I've seen. So, mm -hmm. but I, it did feel very Love Island. I was like, oh, it wow. felt very Love Island. It was like, oh, the random pop theme, and then oh, the random slow mo walk, and then the random look back. It was a lot of even in the uh, the um the, the backstreet promos, like it was very Love Islandish, like. Hey, look at me! I was doing this. It's like I just like it was very low. But like you said, it could be just British editing for British reality TV shows, which is fine. It just gave me. I was like, oh, I just saw it more this week. I was like, oh, this is very Love Island to me. Mm -hmm. But I didn't mind it. I kind of enjoyed it. Oh, I didn't mind it at all. But but yes. Yeah, so episode four, I thought was a little bit better. It was mm -hmm. more competition, so there was more mm -hmm. to fill with the episode, but. Mm -hmm. Um, we see at one point we talked about the Christopher or not the Christopher, the Lawrence and Tanuki idol conversation. Mm -hmm. We also see Doug and Pegleg going out because Pegleg is like, there's a hidden immunity idol. I want to find it. And I'm like, God, no, please. No, Any, yeah. anyone but Pegleg, honestly, <laughs> anyone Peg but Pegleg. And so Doug goes out and thankfully Doug has a pretty good idea of where it is. Yeah. So they go around the well, they're doing their thing, Doug spots it, and then sits on the fucking log. Yep, Doug's like, Oop. I like Doug. I like, I Doug, like too. Doug, I like I'm Doug. I like Doug. And I like Doug, not just because of what he said to Lee, about Lee, but because he seems like a very good strategic player. Like, he was like, Allies are great, and I know I'm going to need them for a while, but at one point, I might have to cut my ally because it, if it's going to better me in the game. And he was like, I like Ren, but if push come to serve and something happens and they need to go, then I was like, see, I like somebody who is going to, who knows why they're here. I'm, as much as I love friendships and I like people, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to win the money. And so I I'm gonna be cool with you and we go play this game together up until I can't be playing this game with you no more. And it is what it is. So exactly. I like Doug. I'm a fan. I, I like him. I'm interested to see what else we see from from Doug. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, we got the reward challenge. It's a hall brawl, kinda. <laughs> hall brawl. Be, be in a long tube full of water, you know, in a trench with water, and you run, run to the other end. end. And you got to get to the other end and ring a bell. It's literally a hall brawl. Hall brawl. This was pretty cut and dry. Yep. Calaton <laughs> wins. Yes. I did love, though. Ashley pointing out that she was the only person to win her matchup Ooh. when mm -hmm. Lee was in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When um, who else Chris was it? I don't know. Uh, Christopher was in it. Christopher was in it. Mm -hmm. Peg Peg was, was, in it. was in it. No, Peg was in it. Peg was in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ren did pretty well, but I mean, not good enough. So. Mm -hmm. Caliton wins a full barbecue. That and this is where... <laughs> well, but they still want a barbecue. Mm -hmm. um, I do love... This is where we got a lot of Jess mm -hmm. confessionals. And mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying her. I just find her so sweet and aloof <laughs> in a lovely way. She's just like, I just can't believe after nine days. Like, I'm so happy for this barbecue. It's just so lovely. You know whose energy Jess is giving me? Jess no. is giving me Christy from Survivor Australia energy. Yeah. 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 She's, she's giving me Christy from Survivor Australia. She's giving me, um, oh no, what is her name? The uh, When George played Survivor Australia the first time, his like ride or die that saved him. Oh, oh, um, oh, no. When, 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 no. No, Tiff, 
Tiffany? No. I'm gonna. I'm, I need to look it up. It's gonna bother me. I forgot. She was on the show too. I can't remember. But yeah, I can't. Yeah, she's just giving me very Christy energy. Like she's gonna wake it to the end and get the zero vote finalist because she's gonna do nothing in the game. But everybody's gonna take her because she's like mom and she's sweet and she's not a threat to anybody. So I can see that. Kara. Kara. Yes. Cara. Got it. Yeah. She's giving me Kara energy in like a really good way. I really like Jess. Mm hmm. Um. But yeah, so they get they get that. We see more that we see the conversation with um, Ashley, Hannah, and Ren talking about overall tribe strength as opposed to physical tribe strength. Mm -hmm. And that leads so beautifully into our immunity challenge where it is a dexterity challenge. Yes. And I'm like, I'll take it. Thank you, Forever UK. <laughs> Thank you, BBC. But, yep, it was. Hold the rope on the disc. You got to spill out the word immunity on the blocks, and everybody got to come in and off the balance beam and put the word up and hold it. And if you can do it, you win. Now, here's my question. Because so they put peg leg like third in the order. Mm -hmm. Why would you not put peg leg first? Right. It didn't end up mattering in the no. grand scheme of things. But if I'm looking at this challenge, I'm looking at a man who legally changed his name to Peg Leg. Because he has a Peg, peg leg. leg. I'm putting him first. So that so way if he drops, it's okay. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, at least he wasn't further in the order. And I'm going to assume they probably were able to pick the order that they could go in. I would think so. Because they had Leilani going twice in like the first four rounds yeah, for yeah. Caliton. So I was like, I would have put him first. That just makes the most logical sense because then if things drop, it's less of a risk right. of him falling. And the person we saw fall the most in this challenge was Peg Leg. Yeah. So I'm just like, I don't get it. I mean, but eventually, once he found his rhythm and knew, figured out how to do it, because it was really just getting down there making that turn, positioning his foot back to where it needed to be, and then go. Yeah. And he kept missing it on the turn back because he was trying to slide back, and it was like, nope, 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 it wasn't working. So, yeah, I would have put him first, so it's like, so you can get your footing yeah. and figure out how to do it. Then yeah. we'll all go after. But and what was, we it, did... Go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. I was like, what we did at the, the end with these big old muscles... Falling off. Peg leg falling. Off. Lee falling. Nathan falling. falling. You want to know who was succeeding in this challenge? Leilani. Ren, Leilani, Tanuki, Jess, Rachel. Rachel mm -hmm. also slayed it in the reward yeah. challenge, too. Yes. She I'm did. like, I don't know that much about Rachel yet. I'm glad that we don't have Rach and Rachel anymore, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, okay, cool. There's only one Rachel. I want to know more about Rachel. Okay. I want to. I want a cute little intro from Rachel. I want to know more about Rachel. I'm like, what is she up? To? Who is she? Who is Who's she? this girl? I would like to see. Speaking like of who know. is she? Who is we got that? a we got a confessional from Matthew, and I literally when they are at the barbecue, we get a confessional from Matthew, and I'm looking and I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> who are you? Who is that man? I don't Who know this he? man. And he got a full intro too. A, a whole and I was thing. like, That's I was cool. like, you seem like... you seem lovely. 22 jobs at 21. That seems concerning, but all right. That's a lot. That's a lot. All right, sir. Sure. All right, sir. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Don't know who you are. Never seen you before until just now. But I'm glad we met you. Maybe we'll see more of you. If you're not a problematic man, I'll take it. Right. I'll take it. But um, this challenge was pretty close. They all kept dropping. Mm -hmm. It was like Kalatama would drop and then Lenena would drop. And then Kalatama would drop again and then Lenena would drop again. And Lenena got it together and they did pull out the win. Yeah. It really uh, was so close at the end, yeah. too. It was, what, one block away? One, yeah, one block away. Yep. 
but Lenina pulls it out. Good for them. I do like overall that, you know, we're now two and two on tribal mm -hmm. immunities. I'm like, I mm -hmm. like that. I'll that take it. Cool. Mm -hmm. But we go back to the Calaton camp and it very quickly it is Leilani or Shy. Yeah. Leilani because she has been dubbed the weakest and there is nothing she can really do despite doing very well in both challenges in this episode. Because I don't think she did all that bad in no, she, the hall bro type. No, she didn't. She did okay. She also she, had to I go mean, up first. She so was it first. was like, she didn't do all that bad. And then the immunity, yeah. she did pretty the, dang good and she let she everybody, everybody know. Everybody. Oh yeah, she was like everybody. This, everybody. This is my strength. This is where I'm good. This is where I I shine. Oh, I don't like. Oh, my favorite part was they were like, "Oh, Leilani did really good this challenge." I know. I know. I, know I did because this is where I shine. I was like, oh. I would have been Leilani though, full T. I would have been like, I know. I told y'all. I know that. This is what yeah, I do yeah. well. That, that, All is right exactly, now. that is exactly what you would have said because that is exactly what you do here with me. We, you know, you good. Like, I know. This is what I do well. And I'm like, okay. Great. <laughs> oh, so yes, I know you would have done that. And I would have been, I would have been in support of it. I would have been in support of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, For so sure. the vote basically comes down to Leilani, who is the weakest despite doing probably the best overall in both challenges this week or this episode and shy who really is just not melding in merging into the tribe dynamic he's right. he's not he's a very direct person he's not you know the most sociable person in the world i am honestly a little confused as to why he was cast if i'm gonna be honest he just does not fit the normal type of survivor player and i think that's fine but like we're not even getting we're not getting confessionals from him we're, we're literally getting nothing from him and so um, i'm just got like, one backstory thing from we him. got his backstory and that tells me he probably goes far because when you get a backstory you either go home that episode or you go far so because i don't think everyone's gotten their we also got Christopher's backstory in this episode, too. Actually, mm -hmm. I think we might have had everybody's at this point. Except for mm -hmm. Hannah. Yeah, we have not had her. Hannah, Ashley. Hannah. Did we get Dylan? Yeah, I thought we got Doug's in the first episode. Maybe. I don't remember, but I <gasps> Oh, we like haven't gotten Tanuki's. No, we haven't gotten Tanuki's. What the fuck? No, we have not got Tanuki's. We've not got Tanuki's or Hannah's or... Ashley's. Ashley's. We didn't get Rachel's yeah. either. Yeah, we want to go get her. She was gone too quick. Yeah, gone too but... soon. Anyway. Yeah, so it comes down to that. We don't really know where it's going to go going into tribal. And guess what, Lana? It doesn't even fucking matter because they're pulling an Australian survivor type twist and we are voting to send somebody to the other tribe. I oh, Here's the thing. I really think it was a world where Shy was going to go home this episode. A hundred percent. But then when they said that, everybody was like, oh, absolutely yeah. not. We go send Shy, who can be, we don't know where he stands with us. He's so direct, he's so antisocial, and he's strong. We are not going to give them another strong player. No, you can have our weakest player and see if she makes it. And it's unanimous. Unanimous. So <laughs> they send Leilani to Lenena. This does mean, though, that it is four guys versus mm -hmm. three women and Ren. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling a little bit more confident mm -hmm. in the dynamics at Lenena. Mm -hmm. I just need Ren, Ashley, and Hannah to scoop her up. Quickly. And I need them to scoop up Doug. Or Christopher. Christopher. It doesn't really matter which. Or both. Or both. I just, I need that to happen. I need that to happen. Like, absolutely. I need that. Because I'm trying to I'm... figure out, because this is a first season, mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out when they're going to do merge. Oh, I don't know. Because I feel like it's probably going to be at like 12? 12? 12? 
11, 12? Gotta be. There's a lot of uh, logistical questions that I think are going to be unanswered for most of the uh, most of the season at this point. But um, but yeah. So if if our theory is correct, in the next three episodes, we should be getting down to merge. Probably. Because we started with 18. I'm thinking probably... Well, at this point, with a non-elimination, they might take it down to 11. Maybe. I think we might have two more weekends of pre-merge. Mm -hmm. And then they'll start week five... With, with the merge. merge. We know this is only an eight-week season. We know it's okay. 16 episodes. So that's kind mm -hmm. of what I'm thinking. Half pre-merge, half merge feels, feels correct right. in my soul. But mm -hmm. who knows? We'll see. But yeah, we'll that, is, that is that. Uh, let us know in the comments below. Are you all enjoying this season? I'm still optimistic. Same. These two episodes were just a little cut and dry and boring and typical and misogynistic. But, you know, I'm I'm still feeling confident. I think there are the pieces here to make a good season. So I'm mm -hmm. feeling optimistic about it. So thank you for joining us for Survivor UK. We'll be back next week. Same time, same place. Probably just me and Lana to talk about Survivor <laughs> UK. Uh, make sure to subscribe. Hit all the buttons that say you support us because we really appreciate your support. You can also go in the description below, uh, follow all of our socials at the Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can follow me and Lana, and you can also go get your cup merch, including but not limited to cup mug. And with that being said, cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Bye.